Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will go through each topic on the ASCP lecture list. In today's video, we'll delve into the world of myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs, a group of hematopoietic disorders caused by genetic mutations in stem cells. These disorders lead to the abnormal expansion of blood cells, including erythrocytes, granulocytes, and platelets. They disrupt the balance of blood cell production in the bone marrow, peripheral blood, and even tissues. The development of MPNs is often due to genetic mutations that make stem cells hypersensitive or independent from normal cytokine regulation, disrupting the usual feedback systems. The world of MPNs is diverse, and it includes four main disorders. Chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML. Polycythemia vera, PV. Essential thrombocythemia, ET. Primary myelofibrosis, PMF. But that's not all. There are also less common conditions like chronic neutrophilic leukemia, chronic eosinophilic leukemia, mastocytosis, and unclassified myeloproliferative disorder. In CML, PV, and PMF, you'll find overproduction of specific blood cell types. Essential thrombocythemia, on the other hand, is characterized by increased megakaryocytopoiesis and thrombocytosis. MPNs aren't static, they can evolve from stable chronic phases to subacute or aggressive growth, and in some cases, they might even transform into acute myeloid or lymphoblastic leukemia. Just like the wide spectrum of colors, MPNs exhibit varying clinical and morphological patterns. Some cases even show bone marrow hypoplasia, making each case unique. And speaking of uniqueness, familial MPNs occur in families with multiple affected members, suggesting a genetic predisposition. Myeloproliferative neoplasms, a complex world where genetic mutations disrupt the symphony of blood cell production, leading to a variety of conditions with their own stories to tell. Chronic myelogenous leukemia, or CML, a specific type of myeloproliferative neoplasm. CML is caused by a unique genetic translocation in a multipotent hematopoietic stem cell, leading to a clonal overproduction of myeloid cells. This overproduction results in an excess of immature cells in the neutrophilic line. The disease follows a distinctive progression, starting as a chronic phase, advancing to an accelerated phase in about 3 to 4 years, and potentially evolving into acute leukemia. Clinical manifestations of CML include recurrent infections, anemia, bleeding tendencies, and splenomegaly, all due to the abnormal accumulation of myeloid cells in bone marrow, blood, and other tissues. Peripheral blood analysis reveals various signs such as neutrophilia with different stages of maturity, basophilia, eosinophilia, and often thrombocytosis. Studies have confirmed the clonal origin of hematopoietic cells in CML, particularly in females with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase heterozygosity. Let's delve into the incidence of CML. It can occur across all age groups, with a notable concentration in individuals aged 46 to 53 years. CML constitutes around 20% of all leukemia cases, with a slight male preponderance compared to females. Initial clinical symptoms associated with CML onset are generally mild and encompass fatigue, reduced physical activity tolerance, loss of appetite, abdominal discomfort, weight loss, and symptoms arising from spleen enlargement. Now, let's explore the cytogenetics of CML and the crucial role of the Philadelphia chromosome. The Philadelphia chromosome, found in hematopoietic stem cells, is a diagnostic indicator of CML. Its origin remains unclear, though it's more frequent in populations exposed to ionizing radiation. The chromosome's presence after bone marrow transplantation hints at the possibility of a transmissible agent. The Philadelphia chromosome was initially identified in 1960 by Noel and Hungerford in Philadelphia as a shortened chromosome 22. In 1973, Rowley from the University of Illinois at Chicago unveiled that the chromosome arises from a reciprocal translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22. This results in the formation of a chimeric gene, BCR-ABL1, producing a 210 kilodalton bcr abl fusion protein. Importantly, this gene produces an enhanced tyrosine kinase activity compared to its natural enzymatic counterpart. And so, chronic myelogenous leukemia, where a genetic dance within stem cells leads to a symphony of overproduction, unraveling a complex tale of disease progression and genetic mysteries. The pathogenetic mechanism underlying chronic myelogenous leukemia, where molecular players dance to the rhythm of abnormal cellular growth. To grasp this mechanism, let's start by understanding the normal roles of the BCR and ABL proteins. The wild-type ABL protein, located on chromosome 9, 
encodes P125 with regular tyrosine kinase activity. The BCR1 gene produces P160, featuring serine and threonine kinase activity, linked to cell growth regulation. Protein kinases, like ABL, catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups to receiver proteins, initiated by molecules like adenosine triphosphate, ATP. The ABL protein's kinase activity requires phosphorylation, regulated by its SH1, SH2, and SH3 domains. ATP binding triggers phosphate transfer, activating the kinase enzyme's active site. In normal pathways, protein phosphorylation initiates cascades of events, activating transcription factors to control cellular functions. ABL tyrosine kinase triggers multiple pathways, orchestrating precise gene activation sequences. In CML, the BCR slash ABL1 translocation occurs adjacent to the ABL1 SH3 domain, causing constitutive tyrosine kinase activity. This enzyme initiates signal transduction pathways, promoting myeloid cell proliferation, inhibiting differentiation, and reducing apoptosis. The outcome is an increased clonal expansion of myeloid cells, decreased apoptosis sensitivity, and altered adhesion to bone marrow stroma. Accelerated and blast phases result from stem cell clones with additional genetic alterations. The bcr abl protein cytoplasmic presence affects hematopoietic and lymphopoietic cell differentiation. Neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, erythrocytes, megakaryocytes, and B lymphocytes are influenced. Genetic segment loss at the ABL1 gene alters adhesion between cells and stroma, potentially disrupting hematopoiesis. Interferon A therapy aims to restore proper cell adhesion, curbing premature cell release. The BCR ABL fusion protein inhibits apoptosis through cytoplasmic sequestration. The P210 protein drives CML transformation of hematopoietic stem cells. The BCR ABL1 gene is also linked to Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL. The minor chimeric BCL-ABL1 gene generates P185-P190 proteins found in Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL cases. The micro BCR variant, when combined with ABL1, generates the P230 protein associated with chronic neutrophilic leukemia. And so, the symphony of BCR-ABL fusion protein unfolds, orchestrating a complex dance of signal pathways, cellular adhesion, and altered differentiation in the intricate realm of chronic myelogenous leukemia. Next in the journey of the fascinating landscape of chronic myelogenous leukemias is its impact on peripheral blood and bone marrow. In both peripheral blood and bone marrow, significant morphologic changes reflect the expansion of the granulocyte pool, especially in later maturation stages. Qualitative alterations are observed in peripheral blood, bone marrow, and even extramedullary tissues at diagnosis. An evident left shift extending to the promyelocyte stage, sometimes reaching blast cells, is remarkable in the peripheral blood. The platelet count often rises due to the disease's myeloproliferative nature. Extramedullary granulopoiesis might affect the spleen sinusoids, liver sinusoids, and more. Let's take a closer look at the typical pattern in the peripheral blood film of chronic phase CML at diagnosis. A noticeable leukocytosis is evident, dominated by segmented neutrophils, bands, metamyelocytes, and myelocytes. Immature and mature eosinophils and basophils are increased. Myeloblasts and promyelocytes account for around 1% and 5% respectively. Lymphocytes and monocytes typically show absolute increase but relative decrease. Nucleated red blood cells are uncommon. Platelets are either normal or elevated, occasionally displaying unusual morphology. Inside the bone marrow, intense hypercellularity due to granulopoiesis is observed, with zones of differentiation into mature granulocytes. Megakaryocytes are usually normal or increased in number, sometimes clustering and showing dyspoietic cytologic changes. Megakaryocytes may appear smaller with fewer nuclear lobulations, and around 20% of patients exhibit increased reticulin fibers. The presence of pseudogauchet cells is a common occurrence. Other laboratory findings reveal elevated uric acid levels and uricosuria due to increased cell turnover, potentially leading to secondary conditions like gout and urinary stones. Around 15% of patients may have total white blood cell counts exceeding 300 billion per liter, resulting in vascular stasis-related symptoms. For typical peripheral blood characteristics, confirming CML diagnosis involves revealing the T922 translocation, identifying the BCR/ABL1 fusion gene, and detecting the BCR/ABL1 fusion transcript. Molecular techniques are common, 
but leukocyte alkaline phosphatase LAP, enzyme activity testing can differentiate CML from leukamoid reactions. The LAP test involves incubating a blood film with a substrate and diazo dye, rating the resulting colored precipitate staining intensity. The LAP score calculation involves scoring different cells and summing up products. It's reported as the mean of two examiner scores with a 10% agreement tolerance. A typical reference range for the LAP score is 15 to 170, lower in untreated CML, and higher in leukamoid reactions or other conditions. Now we uncover its progression and related diseases that share clinical similarities. In the pre-imatinib era, a significant number of cases would transition into acute leukemia, often termed blastic transformation. Before reaching blastic transformation, some patients enter an intermediate phase known as the accelerated phase. During this progression, clinical symptoms worsen, unfavorable changes occur in laboratory values, and responses to treatment deteriorate compared to the chronic phase. The evolving malignant clone is marked by additional chromosome abnormalities, leading to more disruptions in hematopoiesis and greater abnormalities in blood cells. Anemia intensifies, and peripheral blood shows reduced numbers of mature leukocytes, increased basophils, and decreased platelets, often with irregular shapes. The percentage of circulating blasts in the peripheral blood rises from 10% to 19%, and a combined presence of 20% blasts and promyelocytes is proposed for diagnosing the accelerated phase. Blast crisis encompasses peripheral blood, bone marrow, and extramedullary tissues. It usually manifests as acute myeloid leukemia or acute lymphoblastic leukemia, with extramedullary growth potentially occurring as well. Clinical symptoms during blast crisis resemble those of acute leukemia, including anemia, reduced white blood cell counts, and low platelets. As the disease advances, additional chromosome abnormalities accumulate, contributing to disease progression. Now, let's explore related diseases that share clinical similarities with CML but lack the Philadelphia chromosome. Chronic neutrophilic leukemia presents with similar patterns in peripheral blood, bone marrow, and extramedullary infiltration as CML. However, this condition is characterized by the presence of neutrophilic granulocytes exclusively. Chronic monocytic leukemia involves an expansion of monocytes, including functional monocytes. Juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia and adult chronic myelomonocytic leukemia are classified as myelodysplastic slash myeloproliferative diseases due to overlaps in clinical, laboratory, or morphological characteristics. Philadelphia chromosome positive acute leukemia is an enigmatic group of patients. Studies show that around 2% of AML patients and 5% of childhood onset all cases test positive for the Philadelphia chromosome. Placing these cases within the spectrum of CML remains speculative, as some could potentially represent undiagnosed CML that rapidly progressed into acute leukemia before diagnosis. Stay up to date with our latest videos by hitting that subscribe button and activating notifications. Be the first to know when we release new and exciting content. Don't keep all this valuable information to yourself, share this video with your friends who might find it interesting and beneficial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Until next time, take care and goodbye.